a good design of something like a weapon should send a message. This one sends a very clear message. You have made bad life choices. And Shrek agrees. This is the coil gun that Cole and I finished putting together last night. It has three disposable camera chargers in here and seven capacitors inside of it, also from cameras. Under this little bit here, it's got a coil, which is all of the 30 gauge I had. And um, under this flash cover, I've got the neon indicator lights. I had them up on string, up on the wires, kind of like a Medusa array. But it was, you know, having uh, uninsulated solder joints with 300 volts hanging down by my hand wasn't something I was too into. Um, tried a couple of things for the triggering mechanism for the switch to connect the capacitors to power. What I eventually settled on was um, just two pieces of steel rod that touch against each other. I'll show you when I take it apart for the next step here. But, um, yeah, because I couldn't really get my hands on an SCR or a thyristor or anything nice like that, and um, couldn't find any good 30 amp switches or better around here. Um, kind of considered using a circuit breaker. See, I even got the wire solder to it, so now it's useless for anything else, but realized it was a little big for this application, and that it was actually rated for 20 amps. And besides, just because this thing cuts out at 20 amps doesn't mean that the contacts can handle making and breaking 20 amp circuits constantly. And uh, projectiles are just steel rod, relatively low carbon, got this at Ace Hardware. Um, different lengths just to experiment. I noticed they all penetrate about the same thickness and it's just one of them sticks out or doesn't. Uh, to sharpen these, I use the drill. I cut a piece of it with a hacksaw and chuck it into the drill and then rub that up against the grinding wheel. And that gives me a nice sharp end. All right, so let's take this thing apart and see what's in it. All right, here we have a sort of cross section. I took this side off. You can see the burn marks there from where the switch is. I'll get to that in a second. This top piece here that slides back and forth on the dart gun that we took apart, it was meant to advance a little clip full of um, suction tip ended darts and then cock them to be fired. Got little rubber bands back here. But for this, I put this little switch here that's triggered by the screw post. And so you pull this back and then this is connected into this box to the charger units, to the power switch on them, or rather to the flash button. So when you pull that back it activates the flash so it charges the capacitors. And I've got two caps up here, five down here, and a ceramic disc cap which I put in in hopes that it would snub the sparking a little bit. This is my trigger system. This is the trigger from the standard gun. Um, this is the joint from the standard gun that was here. I I don't know if you can see it too well. Lighting in here isn't stellar. But I attached it with some epoxy and wrapped some thread around it here. And then spray painted it to kind of seal it up, I guess. And I've got a little spring right here. It's a little pull spring that goes down to this. And then I've just got the rod coming out. And then i got another rod right here which then connects to the other wire. So the circuit overall is just one wire goes from the capacitors to the coil, another wire comes from the coil to the bottom of the switch, top of the switch, back to the capacitors. So it's really a pretty simple setup. Um, fired the switch several times and you can see a little bit of wear on it, but I'm sure it'll last a good long time before it needs uh, replacement, refurbishing, whatever, which won't be terribly difficult, I'm sure. 
Um, it doesn't even heat up that much because while it is an insane amount of power going through it, it's only going through it for a couple seconds, maybe hundred of a second, whatever. This front box here is the bottom of a gin bottle box, polycarbonate. And um, it's got a little power switch set into the side here, which connects all the batteries to all the chargers so that when it's not plugged in, it's not draining the batteries, or rather when we're not using it, it's not draining all the batteries. Of course, we got the uh, warning to anyone who was pointed at on it. And the Shrek head is from a watch I got in a Happy Meal a while back. Um, stripped it apart and thought, you know, this could be really freaking creepy. So we located the barrel in his mouth. And, um, yeah, it's really a pretty basic thing. So, okay, put it back together. So to use it, we take a shot. And you insert it into Shrek's mouth, into the barrel. It's a very short barrel because unlike guns that involve gas expansion, doesn't need to be huge. Turn it on. Sometimes it starts up on its own. Sometimes it doesn't. You have to cock it. Hear it charging. There we go. Not bad, especially seeing as how it hit cockeyed. I've been thinking about a way to put rifling in this, which would just be to put a motor behind the coil that would spin up the projectile before it's pulled forward. Um, I think that might work. Certainly something to try in the next one. In the meantime, this is a very short range weapon. So not bad as far as penetration distance, that's that much of it that was in there. Not bad at all. Not as good as I would have hoped, but a good way to check the power that this puts in is to try to do that by hand. That is a fair amount of force. You have just made a bad life choice.